In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's the University Church on this fourth Sunday after Trinity. And a special welcome to Naomi, who's joining us for her time as curate here. And a very warm welcome back to Will after his time on sabbatical. As we come together to worship God, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we stand, let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you please be seated? It's very good to be back. The Gospel for today begins with some words of Jesus about welcome, and it seems an appropriate place to start as we welcome the Reverend Naomi Gardam as a member of the ministry team here at the University Church. Naomi will be serving as an assistant curate, and she will be completing a period of training which began with her studies at Ripon College, Cudston, and which continues for a period of about four years here at St. Mary's. Yesterday, in an occasion of great joy at Christchurch Cathedral, Naomi was ordained as a deacon by the Bishop of Oxford, and next year, God willing, she will be ordained as a priest in the Church of God. Now, we've not had a curate at St. Mary's for some years, and people are occasionally befuddled about the difference between a deacon and a priest. So I thought I would spend a moment this morning just unpacking how we understand the role of a deacon in the church. And I want to do this not by talking about the distinctive liturgical role of a deacon, the distinctive way in which they wear a stole over one shoulder and carry out certain functions within the service, But by talking about the readings which we have heard from Scripture this morning, I think they will help to illuminate the role of the deacon and help us to think about the meaning of this ministry. Of course, the Church of England, like the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Churches, continues to honour the tradition of the early Church with a threefold order of ordained ministry, bishops, priests and deacons. The diaconate is the first step along the way. Sometimes described as a transitional deacon, the deacon is then ordained priest the following year, and if they're really unlucky, at some point the priest might be ordained as a bishop. But this does not mean that a bishop stops being a priest or a priest stops being a deacon. The character of ministry begins to acquire a deeper range of dimensions the original dimensions are still there. And in recent years, partly as a consequence of the Second Vatican Council in the Roman Catholic Church, the ecumenical work of Anglican and Protestant churches, we have discovered that in some ways the diaconate is the most important because it describes the foundations of Christian ministry. It's become a truism of ecumenical dialogue in recent years 
that the role of the deacon is described in terms of service. The Greek word diakonos is often associated with service. And in some churches, that has meant the recovery of the permanent diaconate, which almost always involves a distinctive ministry to the poor and the dispossessed. It may involve some chaplaincy work, working with the homeless or members of the deaf community or some form of social outreach program. And yet while this pattern of ministry, this pattern of service, helps us to see an important dimension of the role of a deacon, more recent scholarship, and I think particularly of the work of the New Testament scholar John Collins in his work on diaconia, has come to recognize that in the ancient world, the word diakonos was used to describe a much greater variety of roles. Looking at ancient literature across the board, not just the New Testament, Collins finds the term used in the world of commerce. Deacons as go-betweens, merchants engaged in trade, importers, agents, and mediators. Again, he finds the term used to describe various forms of communication, deacons as interpreters of documents, transmitters of speech or messages, heralds and messengers. He finds the term used to describe various deeds where the deacon has the role of an agent, some kind of representative or vicarious role carrying out an undertaking on behalf of others. And he notes that the role of a deacon often comes into its own in the context of offering hospitality. Here, service is about serving at table, attending to the needs of guests, ensuring that the hungry are fed. And finally, Collins sees the role of a deacon in the world of diplomacy. Servants or deacons are emissaries, ambassadors, authorized representatives and agents. We see the resonances with our scripture readings today. Note first the accent on hospitality and welcome, the service which lies in even giving a cup of cold water to one of Matthew's little ones, a term he loves to use to describe the marginalized and the brokenhearted. But note the pattern, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. There is a representative role. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and reminding them that they are agents, emissaries, heralds, messengers. It's a role that Jeremiah understands all too well in our Old Testament reading. The prophet Hananiah has announced that although Israel had been living in Babylon in exile, its fortunes would be restored. And Jeremiah, who is grumpy at the best of times, hears these words, and immediately he feels the weight lift from his shoulders, quite literally. The passage goes on to describe the way in which Hananiah removes a yoke from Jeremiah's shoulders, this yoke which he has been carrying as a symbol of the subjection of the people of Israel in exile. Now all of this should challenge us to reflect on the role to which Naomi is called, to be an agent, an emissary, a herald of Christ's kingdom. That's why the deacon proclaims the gospel. That's why the deacon preaches. But there is more to this than a representative role. A deacon is also called to be a go-between, prompting people to pray guiding them in their prayers, praying for the people she serves, carrying their cares and concerns, their hopes and their joys in her heart to God. And then there is the ministry of welcome and hospitality. The role of a deacon involves quite literally serving at table, laying the table for the meal, attending to the needs of all those who will be honored guests at Christ's table, ensuring that the hungry are fed, that the thirsty receive something to drink. 
this ministry of hospitality is grounded in those words of welcome which lie at the heart of the gospel. We welcome Naomi today, just as she will in future welcome many others to enjoy the hospitality of this place as honored guests at Christ's table. And our ministry of hospitality, our ministry of welcome and inclusion is quite simply an expression of the hospitality of God, the one who constantly reaches out to us in love and grace, the one who will not let us go, the one in whose arms we can rest and abide. That is why the deacon is told by the bishop to go out into the forgotten corners of the earth, to bring solace and compassion to those weighed down by hurt or disappointment or grief or real and desperate need. But there is more. The deacon invites each of us to share in this ministry because at the end of the liturgy, Naomi will send us out into the world with the words, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Every ordination is an occasion of great joy. It's hugely significant for the person who is ordained. It follows a long and sometimes arduous journey of reflection and discernment and prayer. But it's also significant for every single one of us. Because as we contemplate the foundations of Christian ministry, we are challenged to attend again to the vocation of the church, of this church, and to renew our commitment to love and serve the Lord. Amen. We stand to affirm our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Evening with much on our hearts. We thank you that we can pray to you, that you listen and are attentive to our prayers. We pray firstly, Lord, for your church worldwide, nationally and locally. We thank you for the huge diversity of peoples who gather together every week to worship you in so many different ways. It's a wondrous thing to know that we are a part of the body of Christ joining our prayers today with millions of others around the globe. Thank you too, because we have the privilege of welcoming many to this church. Some come to worship with us, 
others to appreciate our historic building, and yet others to look out over our city or to spend time in our shop and cafe. We thank you for them all and pray that each one will leave feeling blessed. We pray for our volunteers, our staff and clergy and all who work to ensure that St Mary the Virgin is a place where you can, can be encountered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world, our country and our city with all the challenges that, I, so, that so often feel insurmountable. We remind ourselves that you are God of all and pray therefore for the areas where there is conflict, where there's famine, where natural disasters are creating havoc and where refugees are seeking safety and security. We ask you to guide world leaders into the ways of peace. Thank you for the opportunities we have to help and guide us as we consider as a church, as well as individually, how best to respond. Help us to be prophets of peace, as we heard in our reading, so that those we encounter will recognize you, the Lord, have truly sent us, and that you, indeed, are Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the natural world, and recognize our grief when faced with so much ill treatment of our planet, as well as rejoice in its beauty and resilience. We thank you for those working to ensure its ongoing survival and rejoice in the fact that you are our creator and the creator of the world. Continue working your miracles in us and in your creation, we beseech you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for all those in need of our prayers and known to members of our congregation. We bring before you Aetha Templar and all taking exams at the moment, Mary, Sue, Charlotte, Elizabeth, Debbie, Annabelle, Julia, John, Ambrose, Jenny, Richard and Moose. And we remember and give thanks for the lives of those now departed. Brian, Zhu Hongdo, and Anne Barrett. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup, bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, will you please sit down? It's very good to welcome you to St. Mary's this morning. Please do join us for refreshments in the De Broom Chapel over there immediately after the service. You're very welcome. And if this is your first time at St. Mary's, do make a point of introducing yourselves to one of the clergy. Now, I published the bands of marriage between Andrew James Grant Coombe of the parish of St. Barnabas, Cambridge, and Joanna Jagwiga Kalmowska of the parish of St. Peter's Wolvercote. This is for the third time of asking. Also between Joshua David Stott of the parish of St. Mary's Charlton Kings and Bethany Amy Hope Meeling, also of the parish of St. Mary's Charlton Kings. This is for the first time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons may not be joined in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. We keep them in our prayers as they prepare for their wedding day. Now, just to alert you to the fact that on uh, next Sunday, um, our Choral Evensong series at 3.30 begins, and that will take place each Sunday through the month of July. 
And Victoria Mort also tells me that next Sunday, churches together in central Oxford will be hosting a picnic at the Friends House on St Giles. Everyone is welcome. It's a case of bring your own picnic, I'm afraid. There's tea, coffee and cake will be provided. But um, if you'd like to go along, uh, please do. And on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday, there's a gardening day at Hollywell Cemetery at 10 o'clock. And you'll see details about other activities on the back of the service booklet. Now, two things. First, as I return from sabbatical, I want to mention some thanks to all the members of the ministry team, especially Hannah Cartwright, Sarah Mortimer, and the chaplains for holding the fort in my absence. I owe you a great debt. Thanks also to the lay staff of St. Mary's. The last few months have been exceptionally busy, and it's good to have such an excellent staff team to ensure that St. Mary's continues to flourish. And I also want to say a word of thanks to the church wardens, Nicholas and Karen, and to the other church officers. They carry a huge burden in the background, and it's important for all of us to express our gratitude to them. So can we give them a round of applause? Finally, it's lovely to welcome Naomi properly to St. Mary's as she deacons at the Eucharist for the first time. Now, in a moment, there are some legal formalities for us to complete. But before we do that, I also want to explain and underline that this is a training post. Naomi will be with us for four years. She will complete a year as a transitional deacon, and then hopefully she will be ordained priest. Now, the timings of all that may be adjusted because, as some of you are aware, Naomi is expecting, and so her maternity leave will begin in September. And this may be an opportune moment also to offer a word of welcome to Naomi's husband. Prayers for you as you continue in your training. It's lovely to have you with us. Now, do please make a point of getting in touch with Naomi as she begins this new ministry at St. Mary's. I'm sure she would love to hear from you. Um, now for the legal bit. As well as being ordained, um, a new deacon is issued with a license by the bishop. And as part of the licensing, there are various declarations and oaths that have, been, have to be made. But just to assure you that the right declarations have been made, we've got to do it again on the first Sunday. So here we go. I'll read a bit, and then you'll hear the declaration from Naomi. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. Naomi, in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Naomi Terero Anagadam, clerk in holy orders as an assistant curate in the benefice of Oxford St. Mary the Virgin, with St. Cross, with St. Peter in the East, in the Archdeaconry of Oxford and Diocese of Oxford, do so affirm, and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised and allowed by canon. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Will you please stand? The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you 
and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.